Hey guys, welcome back to the Lila Rose podcast. We're at the new set. I hope you guys like it. We've been working on this for a long time for you, and there's going to be more changes as time goes by. Let me know what you think in the comments. Today, I'm sitting down with my very dearly loved brother, Paul. Paul Rose of the YouTube channel, Sing the Hours. This conversation is a little different than my typical podcast conversations, I'll be honest, because, well, you'll see, it was just hard to not stop laughing talking to him because... He's crazy and hilarious, but he also is very cool and is doing some very neat things. We talked about his ministry, Sing the Hours. We talked about the faith. We talk about martyrs and having the strength to follow God no matter what the cost may be and so much more. I hope you enjoy this conversation. All right, we can just start. Just to start it. Okay. Introduce yourself. <laughs> Me first? Introduce. What do you mean Aren't you, you first? the host? It's my show. Yeah, so Wait, this is part of the show? Introduce yes, yourself. this is Oh, sorry. Hi, uh, I'm Paul Rose, and I am Lila's uh, best younger brother, and I'm happy to be here Why with, are you looking with sister. Isn't that you my just, camera? No, just talk to me. You just, you can no, just, dude, the people. Dude, and I have a connection. Oh, man. We talk all the time. I want to talk to them. All right. <laughs> They're my new friends. But weird, it's like an interview format where you just like talk to each other. I think it's weird like on <laughs> CNN when they don't look at the camera and just look at each other. These are my friends. <laughs> Okay, so you're my little brother. I'm glad that that's the first thing that you thought of when you were introducing yourself because, you know. Do you want to start over or was that no, okay? No, I mean, didn't you want to talk about what you do? <laughs> like your show, your ministry, oh, your yeah. YouTube it's, channel? It's not a ministry, but... Um, <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, so uh, we should start over. This is <laughs> this is crazy. Can we just roll it? No, no, the don't, don't undo what we did because okay. we might use it. Okay, right. so okay. Lila, it's great to be here. I am your little brother. <laughs> See, it's weird to talk to you. I'm Lila's little no, no, brother. Talk to me, Paul. It's just a, it's just a conversation. They're, pretend we're with friends at a table, but you're still talking to me. Okay, I would still All look right. at my friends. <laughs> but you're talking to me okay, in this moment. So Lila right. is my sister. <laughs> <laughs> I do a project called Sing the Hours, in which I <laughs> chant. <laughs> Yeah. I might need some milk. <laughs> he needs a little cup of milk. Okay, so All right. um, <laughs> Lila. Yes. But you know what Welcome I do, so that's so show. fake. Why would I tell you what I do? Because just, just, just pretend for a moment. <laughs> just talk about. Just, just be chill. Just like I'm chill. What do you do? What do you? What do you? Yeah. Tell me about yourself. <laughs> so I, I do as you. Hi, so loud so, gal. Uh, <laughs> I, I am I'm Lila Rose's brother. <laughs> oh, we've, established, <laughs> we've established that. I All do right. a podcast. It's called Sing the Hours. It's okay, called I, good, I, I Sing it. the Hours. That's it's great. It. <laughs> that's awesome. I love it's that for you. <laughs> the no, liturgy good. of the hours. I Formerly love that. Formerly called the Divine Office. That's great. Yeah. That's I love your sing the hours. Yeah. So I sing the hours. And what we, does that mean? What does it mean to sing the what are the hours? Yeah. What are you singing? Um, yeah, so the Catholic Church and other faith traditions in Christendom have the discipline of singing the Psalms. It used to be before clocks existed at the <laughs> uh, at the divisions at approximately every three hours of the day. Now it's literally every three hours a day, so 6 a.m., 9 a.m., noon, etc. And every Catholic priest you've ever ma met makes a vow to do this at their ordination. It's part of their vow to like obedience to the bishop and celibacy. Priests also pledge to do all these psalms. And that's what it's made of. It's made of psalms, as in the Psalms of David from the Bible. That's its primary content. The special thing about it and the reason why this project exists is because it is the principal way in which lay people are invited to participate in the liturgical life of the church. All right. So what is lay people? Who yeah. are lay people? Chips. <laughs> <laughs> lay people are the, it's people who are not ordained. <laughs> Was that an authentic laugh? Yeah. Okay. So lay people, I'm a lay person. You're a lay person. Franco is a He's lay a person. Chip. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> as opposed to like a priest or religious. Yeah. And priests and religious make various 
degrees of vows to pray the Psalms, sing the Psalms all the time, but lay people are invited very, very strongly, cordially to do the Liturgy of the Hours. And it's, it's a very strange type of liturgy because number one, by content, it's actually the majority of liturgy is Liturgy of the Hours. Of course, we have the Mass and then we have sacramental liturgies like baptism or even like exorcisms, which is somewhat liturgical. But Liturgy of the Hours is like most of the liturgical life by like airtime of the church. And yet it's the liturgy people are least familiar with. And yet it's the type of liturgy that you don't even need a priest to do, which is why like a bunch of people could discern to be nuns like the martyrs of Compiègne mm -hmm. and they dedicate their lives to doing authentic liturgy all the time, but they're just sisters and lay people. They're basically lay people like religious people are not ordained. So, so. we got the lay people and you yeah. mentioned the liturgical calendar a few times or liturgy. What yes. is liturgy? I think people think of the word and maybe if they're familiar with it, they think like some sort of a ritual in a church. Liturgy is, what is liturgy? just a beautiful, beautiful concept. It's what isn't liturgy in to a Christian, uh, to a Christian who participates in an apostolic community. It's like, Liturgy is the tearing of the veil between heaven and earth. Liturgy is a participation in the wedding feast of the Lamb. Liturgy is uh, is our boot camp for our heavenly destiny, which is eternally praising God and being one with Christ and the Trinity and gazing and having a great time. And uh, like liturgy is, it means in Greek, a work, work for the mm -hmm. people, work on behalf of the people, public work even, public works. So liturgy involves people coming together together to enter into the Trinitarian mystery. It involves mm -hmm. things passed down from the apostles to us, like the Psalms. Like That's another feature of Christian liturgy is that it's almost entirely made up of mm -hmm. breathing and living out scripture and singing. And liturgy is, is a, a communal act. Liturgy is an act of worship. There's so many answers. Mm -hmm. And I just rattled off like good. we could take any one of those titles that we just like rattled off and that could be a whole episode. That's good. That's good. I think... Maybe there's this sort of sense about liturgy for those that are not already like really aware of it and in it, that it's maybe boring or out of touch in some way, or it's just like very religious act that's kind of dry. Yeah. But with liturgy and sing the hours, like my encounter with your ministry, not ministry, I know you don't like that word. You can explain that. I don't know you like the word it's ministry. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm okay. just not a minister. I'm not like okay. ordained. So, I mean, I it might okay. be an apostolate, oh, an I apostolate. might call it okay. now, or a... um a project, but I mean, what I'm doing in the Liturgy of the Hours is the prayer of the whole church. It's yeah. not my ministry. I'm simply just like, I'm like, a, at best, mm -hmm. I'm a loudspeaker for, and nobody's like, shout out to the loudspeakers at the baseball game. They're really helping out. No, it's about the game. It's about the, there's a game much mm -hmm. bigger than what I'm presenting. And it's very important. You know, What's so cool though, is with the sing the hours and, and the, and the liturgy of the hours is that you have the Psalms, yes, which are you know, King David, obviously, I think he's written. Did he write all of them? Are there any that were not written? Uh, some church fathers him? say that he wrote all of them. Some say that he clearly wrote most of them, but not all of them. But I think he wrote all of yeah. them. Yeah. And then you have Jesus speaking the Psalms. And on the cross, he said he words sung from the them, Psalms. Is he, what sung, I think. he sung them. In my meditation on the cross, mm -hmm. I don't imagine him going, Oh, God, my God, why are you forsaken me? I imagine him going, Oh, God, my God, why mm -hmm. have you forsaken me? Much more realistic. And that's why modern TV can't get any ancient Christian or Jewish person correct, because we live in a post singing culture. Mm. That's why even like Lord of the Rings was very special, because even they they had the courage to show like like mm. uh, Aragorn sing a little bit, and they had the courage to show the Hobbit singing, because Tolkien every third page mm. or whatever of Lord of the Rings is song, right? Mm. Like the Ents sing and everybody sings. Tolkien is not creating an idealized world; he's creating a human, a, mm. a, a real world. Mm. Whereas we lose reality when we lose a culture that sings for the sake of its itself, not for the sake of consuming music. Like I'm going to listen to it to help with this or to make me feel this way or to like, we, we now consume music and we are now mm. the receiver of music as if we're all Lords and Kings. And very, there's very little experience of directing music to the Lord and King in a way mm. that is grounded um, and what's beautiful about the Psalms, as you say, is that in the liturgy, the hours and in liturgy, it's about participating in Christ's voice and David's voice in the case of the Psalms and giving God's own, mm. own words back to him. So instead That's of us mm. like making stuff up and like making up a song that pleases our ear and a song that 
you know, has theology that we think is palatable to us and makes us feel good. Like so many of the worship mm -hmm. music, which is far from worship music as it would be understood in ancient Christianity today is just like stuff that um, puts Jesus in a various safe box that we can, we, that's palatable to us. It's very rare to hear a modern worship song that really succinctly says something like, Create a clean heart in me, O God, renew in me a steadfast spirit. Have mercy on me, God, in your goodness. In your compassion, blot out my offense. I've never even heard of a modern song that talks about my offense. So like the Psalms have a depth of, because it's God's words. It's God's perfect sacrifice of song that we then participate in. And when you give God's own words back to him, it's a perfect sacrifice because that's what Christ is victim and priest, right? And in Mass, we receive Christ's victimhood for the salvation of our souls and forgiveness of our sins. But Mass is not about what we bring to the table. Jesus brings everything to the table. In the Liturgy of the Hours, we get the chance to give Christ the only thing possible that we could bring to the table, which is praise. Ourselves, Our, and, and, and as a gift of praise. A, so, a gift of, yeah. a sacrifice of praise there's only two things mm -hmm. centrally call it a sacrifice of praise in Christian history. One is the Eucharist, the, the, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of God given to us, and the other is the Liturgy of the Hours. They're both called interchangeably the sacrifice of praise, which means that the, the, the call of Christ, the gift of Christ is the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. The response, the response, the thank you note, which which helps us in, indwell that mystery in us is the Liturgy of the Hours. It's pretty awesome. WeHeartNutrition.com is a wholesome product with wholesome values. This is a vitamin company which designs its product with the highest quality ingredients that are research-backed specifically for wherever you are at in your life. So if you are a woman just seeking an everyday vitamin, WeHeartNutrition.com has got the best product for you. If you are seeking to conceive, you're hoping to get pregnant, they've got a product for you. If you are pregnant, they've got a product that's a great prenatal vitamin for you. If you've just had a baby and you need to replenish all of those depleted vitamins in your body and minerals in your body, they've got the best product for you. We Heart Nutrition has got you covered wherever you are in your stage in life. And what's awesome about this company is it's not only an American-based company and a small family business, but they support your values. Did you know that a lot of the vitamins that are sold online or in the store are owned by conglomerates that actually oppose and hate family values? Not so with We Heart Nutrition. WeHeartNutrition.com actually donates a full 10% of its sales back to the pro-life movement, supporting moms and babies in need. So stop buying your vitamins from some big conglomerate that doesn't support your values, but instead go to weheartnutrition.com today, find the vitamin package that best fits the needs and where you're at in your life and order these amazing vitamins to help you thrive. That's weheartnutrition.com and you can use the code Lila at checkout for a full 20% off your first order. That's weheartnutrition.com and use the code Lila at checkout for a full 20% off your order. So you guys can check out Sing the Hours at Paul's YouTube channel, which we're linking, but you're kind of crazy and insane in that you are producing two original Sing the Hours, Vespers and Laud. So you have two parts of the liturgy. Yeah. There's more to the liturgy of the hours during the day, but you've picked, why did you pick just these two yeah. parts? Are there <clears throat> six or seven? How many different offices Depends are there? Depends on how you count. A, a priest is required to do office of readings, at least one of the daytime offices. There are three, lauds, um, vespers, and compliments. So the minimum that you're going to do is five. And you recommend two at minimum for lay people, lauds, and vespers. Lay, lay or people, just everyday people. Lay people, there's no rule. Do as much as you want or don't want. Um, so, so if you're, if you're a, you know, for those who are listening here, maybe evangelicals. Let's call you a Bible believing Christian. Yeah. You're a Catholic. You're Orthodox. You would say, and you're a lay person. You're not a priest. You're not a bishop. It doesn't matter who you are. You're a mother working busy day. You're in an office. Yeah, you're you whatever can... you're doing. Your student, you would say to to make your daily rhythm be part of the rhythm of the really the life of the church, the life of God. Yeah. To, it's the Bible. It's the Psalms, and it's not just recitation. It's actually singing it, which I think is hard for some people, quite frankly, because some people are, are gifted with the song with the gift of a great yeah. voice. And I think a lot of people, it's a little bit scary to like sing their prayer. So maybe some people that's wonderful and they love it. Why is the singing so important? So I, I don't know the exact citation. In, I'm sorry, I don't know the exact number. 
But I do know, and we all know, if we read the Bible, that the command to sing when we're addressing God is pretty common. It's very Throughout common. Throughout the Psalms. Not just the Psalms, even uh, mm. the New Testament. James says, is any of you joyful? Let him sing. Um, mm. I mean, we have mm. in most, like, if you walked into our Eastern, a, a Ukrainian mm. Christian, in their Ukrainian liturgy, they don't say many words. In a Greek liturgy, they don't say any words. In a Maronite liturgy, you might hear two words said. I'm talking about other they other ancient Christianity. I think it is a very fixed idea throughout all of Christian history that prayer, when you address God, you address him in song. Not just because of the obviousness of that in scripture, but because when you sing, you are actually involving your whole self. It becomes something where, I mean, you can talk, you can take it from a scientific angle, the brain and how the, mm. the information processors are involved when you're, when you're talking, but then the limbic system, the middle brain is what gets in the cockpit when you're singing. And then it actually fires off many different, almost like taking, uh, some sort of supplement it like, but more mysteriously than that, why is it that most people who stutter, who have these weird mm, corruptions in their, point. they have these strange, um, mm. um, dysfunctions in neural pathways that regard speech mm. and speech is super insidious because Everything is involved with speech. If you close your eyes right now, Lila, and close your mm -hmm. eyes, everybody. I'm going to look at the camera for this and close your eyes. Mm -hmm. Camel. What just popped into your head? <laughs> Nothing. That's no, funny. no. The, think of it again? What, in okay. your mind's eye, what just happened when I said camel? Just now I thought of a picture of a camel yeah, because a picture I of tried a camel. to do that on purpose. But no, no but you, you can't it, help it. You can't help it. I guarantee you that if I well, say I any word. Well, I that's what you wanted me to do. But honestly, before when you did it, nothing came into my if head. If I say any word, <laughs> I don't know what if that I means. say any word, but, the image of said word will pop up in your head because the processor code. Like a physical, like you see it almost. Yeah, in easy. your mind's eye. Well, it, you, you know what, you, there's a perception. You understand what's being said. But everything is attached to words. Yeah. All of our understanding of reality right. is attached to language. So a person with a stutter, it's a very difficult thing for an adult person with a stutter to to mm -hmm. um, go through therapy because it is very, very insidious in terms of how many neural pathways a speech hang up. Like I have friends who are scared to go on planes and every time they go on a plane, they get petrified, right? Sometimes I feel that way. But it's like, that's confined only to flying 40,000 feet above the ground. But if every time you're forming speech, you, you, your brain goes mm. into this, this halting, that's very bad. But I was, I was even working with a, a young man. I'm, I, my, pub, my day job is I'm a public speaking mm. coach. And when I was a child, like many children, I had a stutter. So I'm very familiar with all this, like, yeah. But it's crazy. I remember that. Yeah. It's Wait. amazing how far you've come, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lila. Very eloquent. <laughs> yeah. So I was working with a young man. Mm. And I said, okay, just sing it, which is a well-known thing. All my speech pathologists out there, what have you. I mean, people even with debilitating stutters tend to lose it when they're singing. Why? Because the singing, it, it, it breaks the feedback mm -hmm. loop of, because the limbic system sends out these terror mm -hmm. signals, but the singing goes to the very heart and soul of your body and your brain. And it then sends these different signals on all those speech patterns. And it's pretty awesome. So Paul, have you done your Vespers yet? Uh, no, but I would love to. Let's just do like a minute to show people how. A minute? This is Why don't we do fifteen minutes? How long do you usually do these minutes, episodes? Fifteen minutes. Um, let's just let's just do like a couple lines just to show people. I don't. So oh, no. I, I'll sing a psalm with you from Vespers. Okay, but I'm not, that I don't good. do a couple lines of Vespers. Once I'm in, okay, okay. I don't even let a a natural <laughs> disaster prevent me from finishing once I start. Very, very nice. Well, I mean, think about it. If if if, if I'm no, in the zone and I'm offering that's the good. sacrifice, I'm not going to stop the sacrifice. Okay, so you use I breviary. So walk through people how they do this. If they want to join this ancient pair of the church based on Holy Scripture yeah. that for thousands of years Christians have prayed, you don't have to be any particular stripe of Christian, Orthodox, Catholic, oh, yeah, Protestant. Lots of, you can be lots. any. You can be yeah. any Christian anywhere. Um, and yeah, there's this app called I breviary. It's free, right? No. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, it is free. It's, like, it's to no, sorry. Sponsored yes, by totally Iberry. free. No. Okay, yeah. Totally Great, free. free. Um, so let's do us. Let's just do one. Yeah. So we're gonna do. How this we're, is done. we're just gonna do the Tuesday one. So we're we're the, you use the word sing, but sing the hours, but it's it's actually chant the hours. No. Yeah, I'm chanting. It's singing. chant. It's yeah. chant singing. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Look, let's the point it. is, everybody. <laughs> 
Jesus is waiting to hear you sing him a love song. That's all Aww. I gotta say. And if you do, don't, no, I remember you don't saying, offer him vegetables like oh, Cain. I love I extremely love your passion and zeal and what you've done with this ministry, whatever you want to call it, apostolate. It's amazing. It's it's truly amazing what Paul has done. But I remember you said something to me a couple years ago that really stuck, where you said, Have you ever thought, have you ever imagined, visualized Jesus, our Lord and Savior, singing? Yeah. Have you ever thought about him singing? What would it have sounded like if Jesus sang? Well, it sounds like a, what we're about to do right now. Let's let's do it. All right. Well, maybe right. maybe so, more you. You're um, you're the pro, you're the professional. Well, you, so let's just uh, do a very. We'll do okay. Which one are we going to? Night prayer, right? Or evening prayer? Evening sorry. prayer. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, the second psalm. So we can evening start prayer, with that. best verse. Okay. The second yeah, psalm. We can start with the second psalm. It's fine. All right. We'll just do. It's psalm a short one, psalm. Psalm one twenty five. So, yeah, one thirty one is the second psalm. Short psalm, so a piece of cake. Okay, it's not even going to take us ten, one minute. It'll take us 30 seconds. Okay. All right, so we're just going to do it. Um, okay. <clears throat> so it starts with an antiphon. So we trade off. You you say a, sing By a couple lines. By two lines. Okay. Yeah, so here we go. Let's do it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As it was Amen. In Unless you acquire the heart of a child... You cannot enter the kingdom of God. O Lord, my heart is not proud, nor haughty my eyes. I have not... Oh, gosh. Sorry. <clears throat> Want me to go lower? I'll start lower. I, That's fine. I, 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 I have not... I, uh, I'll start lower. No, and okay, I'll, let me try again. I have not gone after things too great, nor marvels beyond me. Truly I have set my soul... In silence and peace. As a child has rest, as a child has rest in its mother's arms, even so my soul. O Israel, hope in the Lord, both now, now and forever. forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, <clears throat> is now, and will, will be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Unless you acquire the heart of a child, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So, <clears throat> what's beautiful about that? First of all, lovely. It's great. It's great. There's no, there's no joyful noise that's mm. going to displease the Lord. And whatever, <laughs> no, it's beautiful. And and even for myself, if Thanks, I'm Paul. <laughs> if I'm like on an airplane, because I'll still chant. I I will. I'll, I just mm -hmm. I do it. No matter where I am, I chant. The very best way to start your day is with a steaming cup of coffee, but not just any coffee. You're going to want to drink seven weeks coffee because it is the most delicious coffee that you will ever taste. If you go to sevenweekscoffee.com today, you'll see all the different blends and roasts that they have, but this is low acid, gourmet, ethically sourced, small batch roasted, delicious coffee. It's what I love to drink in the morning and you're going to love it too. What I love about sevenweekscoffee.com is not only is it ethically sourced and the best beans, they use the top one to 2% of all beans in the world to make their coffee, but seven weeks coffee also gives a full 10% of all their revenue directly back to the pro-life movement, to pregnancy resource centers. In fact, they are almost hitting the milestone with your help of a half a million dollars, $500,000 donated directly to help moms and babies in need. You can be a part of this by going to sevenweekscoffee.com today. You can pick your favorite subscription of your favorite blend of coffee. My favorite is the medium Ethiopian roast. And if you become a member of the Heartbeat Club, meaning you're going to get coffee delivered to your door every single month, you'll get a full 15% off your order. And if you use the code Lila at checkout, you'll get another 10% off your order for a full 25% off your first order of seven weeks coffee. So go right now to sevenweekscoffee.com, pick your favorite coffee blend, put in your order, use the code Lila at checkout for up to 25% off your first order. Know that you're not only drinking a delicious cup of steaming hot coffee in the morning, but you are supporting the pro-life movement, giving back 10% of everything that you order to help moms and babies in need. Go check them out today. That's sevenweekscoffee.com. You are going to love this coffee and you're going to love this mission just as much. Well, and it, it's true. Like if, like if you practice, if you do this daily, your voice gets more warmed Within up. Within three I mean, days, just, yeah. it'll be a piece of cake. It's so amazing how much the, yeah. But the other mm -hmm. cool thing about it is that um, I often contemplate, Andrea Bocelli has a great voice, but in 
Andrea Bocelli's voice compared to the cherubim and seraphim who sing God's praises eternally, Andrea Bocelli sounds like a trash can. <laughs> so in terms of the margin of difference between you and I and Andrea Bocelli <laughs> and then the cherubim. Well, are you saying that you are the seraphim and I'm Andrea Bocelli? No. And I sound I, like a trash can no, to I'm the I'm saying that you, me, and Andrea Bocelli are all the same in God's eyes in all terms right, of right, the right. singing. because It's ch- okay. I know I'm not as... Good of a singer as you, I accept. And I know I'm and not as good as Andrea Bocelli or a cherubim, yeah. but I never will be. But yeah. I can still, I mean, all I have is my little. Well, little it's like the drummer boy, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the little drummer boy. Dun, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. What can I give him? But uh, yeah, yeah, so I'll give I mean, him my yeah, song. You, just, you just give God's own, yeah. wor- own words back to him. I think, think that's about, the like, best little, part. Like little kids, like if you go to like a kid's concert or you see your little <clears> kid singing, <throat> they have no, they just belt it out. You know, they're just on, on, they're just full of joy. There's no. I mean, now it's easy to be self-conscious, to be honest, on this podcast, because it's like a podcast and it's for the YouTube channel. It's a podcast. This is a podcast. Mm. But um, anyways, the point I think you're making, which I love, is that just give them your heart and just put your heart into it. And And do it with other people, too. Mm. Like it's a that's the beautiful thing about this is that I was on a retreat recently. We, We ran a Sing the Hours retreat. And there's a really phenomenal thing that happens when nobody's microphone and nobody has an instrument. Mm. If you got like 30, even, even if you had 10 people, now you're all chanting the Psalms and now you're, there's just one voice that comes out of it. After a few lines, you guys get in sync. And even if you have four it's people like at the beach the other day, and what happens yeah. is then it's like, wait a second, there is mm. a body of Christ and wait a second. There is a, a oneness. We're all one in Christ Jesus because we're literally in his words right now and we're offering him our words. So every he's all in all in this circumstance. And our relationship to each other is as co-experiencers of the word of God yes. and our voices then become one. And humans are really good at when there's enough, you know, enough force of, when there's enough people, eventually like the pitch becomes pretty good. Mm. You know, and it's a really phenomenal experience to strip away all the modern hangups we have where we amplify everything and we got so many instruments we're jamming into it. And now and now we get this this like it's now about the music instead of the word. And what we just we were meditating on the word. We were just chewing on scripture aside from the false start at the beginning, which is beautiful. I love that. you. (laughs) Oh, it's okay. But um, no, I mean, so if you think about it, Mm -hmm. it's it's about the scripture first. The music is there as a vehicle of beauty, a vehicle of unity, and a vehicle of raising up the whole body, the breath, into the experience. And so when you, that prayer is so foreign to Mm. most Christians in general. No matter what kind of Christian you are, how often do you have such a, you know, a a communal, truly servant Mm minded experience of scripture and that's why liturgy hours is so special and this isn't my like thing it's like this is what they did at the abbey today this is what every lonely priest does in his rectory by himself at night just to brag on what you're doing it's really i think again i'm no expert the way paul is on this but what i can see looking at you and this has been a project years in the making is that you see this is like very special gem it's literally a gem of the church that we have the psalms first of all like the Mm. psalms are incredible these are the prayers to pray right these are the prayers jesus prayed they're the prayers that we all throughout christendom have prayed how do well do we know our psalms do we do we sing them do we pray them daily we should pray the psalms daily but then you're not just praying any old psalms daily you're doing this in union with the rest of the church throughout christendom Mm. for for centuries but what i love that you're done paul is you've you haven't modernized it like with like oh, strumming the guitar like let's modernize it, you're just bringing it through a modern medium, podcast sure. and all this stuff. You're doing it with your voice, which you know you used to want to be like Justin Bieber, right? So you've got the oh yeah, you've got the cool. But your voice is beautiful, but it's not it's not like a opera voice, you know. It's not like a. I've actually had to unlearn it, it, a lot of in order to pray yeah. properly. I've had to strip down a lot of stylistic things that I learned in yeah. order because because now even when I record it really is I'm just I I meaning you've gotten less poppy yeah over I mean, time I, with you, this podcast. I, my voice is my voice yeah and my voice is and I'm not saying that in a negative way. sure it's a sure no voice. no it's, yeah. but but yeah I mean the very medium itself I, there's no rhythm in the in chant so I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not confound to a beat it's not going to get you yeah get your hips moving <laughs> it's wh- just it's designed to move the soul but what I love about what you're doing is that 
you have now have how many millions of views and downloads with the I different, know, a lot. Yeah, like millions of yeah. people, you know, at least hundreds of thousands are doing these prayer. Yeah, but so many millions more do it. And, you know, it's not it's the beautiful thing. I was thinking about this tonight. Throughout if we had history. done what time is it? So we just missed it. But if we had mm. done Compline a few minutes ago, yeah. I think it, they do it at nine. We would have done it exactly and this is the cool thing. If you ever do do the hours on the hour, you don't have to. As lay people, even with priests, there's not strict rules. But what's so cool is that sometimes if I if it's 9 p.m., I'll be like, I got to do Compline now. You know why? Because then I know for a fact that on the East Coast, I will guarantee you that at least at that moment, at least on any given day, 5,000 people are now singing with or you. praying the That's exact cool. same text. So you get this, wait a second... I am now cool. mystically being united because that's what liturgy does mm. too, is liturgy unites you across time and space. Mm. And when one mass is offered in a, in a chapel, it's still Jesus offering himself for the whole world. Mm. That's why you can, you can pray for souls anywhere. And the, the mass is all encompassing. Liturgy of the hours is like that too. And the sign of the liturgy of the hours being like that is, is so, in some ways more visible because like just up the road at that abbey, if we now, anytime you're at work, now that you, now that you know what they do and you can look at their schedule online, it's the same schedule that it is for the global church. If you, the other day I woke up at five, five thirty AM cause my baby and, uh, it was five thirty AM on the dot and I started doing office of readings. Mm. Guess what? Unbeknownst to me, that's when they were doing their office of mm. readings down the road. And I was even chanting cause they do all the mm. old music and I do the old music and I do it with the right, you know, matching it up right. I was singing the same stuff and probably the same tune they were singing it up the road. So now it's not, it's not just you singing. You're, I, I was united to those, you know, 60, 70 monks there, mm. even so that close. That's a really mm. powerful idea. It's really special. And nobody is like having to make a movement. Like it's, it's not even a movement that I could make because the movement is like 10 billion strong in heaven right now. Cause heaven and earth all do it together. I'm certain of that. And so like the movement's there. So it's like, just jump in, you know, like mm. be, be a part of it. The prayer is, universal it's incredible that 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 mystery is it's brilliant because at the center of the mystery is the fact that christ it has truly overcome the world mm. and that's the sign of it i think about cavemen all the time cavemen did horrible things but your ancestor was a caveman <laughs> and my ancestor was a caveman and that caveman had the same dna we did and those male <laughs> no listen this is important those male cavemen were especially brutal males are no good not good news they would they would pillage another tribe and do terrible things. Oh my gosh, we do that today. No, but but it was a more of a universal. Like like Cain was like fifty percent of humans were murderers at one point with Cain and Abel, whatever. So here's the crazy what about thing. Adam and Eve. They, whatever. They, they probably twenty five percent. They they murdered all of humanity with their sin. Anyway, the crazy thing is the miracle of the caveman is that the creature with the same DNA. Like mountain lions back then behaved the same way mountain lions behave now, but God exists and we're made in His image. Because of, you have the image in the 11th century of a whole group of maybe a thousand monks in a monastery. And rather than a thousand monks in a monastery being together and their ancestors all would have wanted to murder everyone else and be the top <laughs> alpha. But well, what are we, wait for it. I lost. Wait for I, it. I truly lost. Where now the same this. creature in the monastery <laughs> whose ancestors all killed each other is now singing together. Salve Regina. Oh, I see. Mater misericordia. They're thinking about a woman together. Yeah. Oh, not in a lustful way, not mm. in a domineering way. Like, I mean, the come on. Chants. Yeah. The the chants of the church have done more for mm. the rights of man and the human dignity of the creature. Mm. It also proves the existence of God because I'm telling you right now, no anthropologist, no biologist. No person could possibly ex explain if the Holy Spirit didn't do something crazy and Jesus didn't come to earth 2,000 years ago. If you can have the same creature with the same DNA in 1,000 AD meeting together, not to murder each other and compete for resources, but just to sing. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae. And be celibate? Like, what is happening here? That's why it's important that we we preserve these traditions because mm -hmm. they're they're a contradiction of the times, but they're also they not just for the beauty, especially for the beauty, they they reveal the nature of God and the exalted nature of man redeemed. 
in a really special way. Sorry for that mm. tangent. You can cut all that out if you want. <laughs> that's, that's the bonus episode right there. <laughs> The caveman yeah. rant. I know. I, I I lost you. Just cut it out. I lost you. Are you gonna cut that out? We'll see. We haven't been cutting much lately, but maybe. Oh, no, dude, start this is cutting. this is beyond the pale. What's maybe happening? We start here. cutting. Everylife.com is America's fastest growing baby diaper company. I love everylife.com because they not only make amazing products, these diapers are leak proof with great quality materials, but this is also a diaper that is made with love by a pro-life company that is giving back to the pro-life movement. So when you go to everylife.com, you set up your diaper subscription for that little one in your life that you love. You're not only getting an amazing product for your little one, but you're also supporting the pro-life movement. Did you know that companies Companies, unfortunately, like Pampers and Huggies, are owned by conglomerates that actually are pro-abortion, that donate money to groups like Planned Parenthood? Not so with EveryLife. EveryLife.com is not only a best-in-class product for babies, but it also loves babies and supports babies by supporting the pro-life movement. So go to EveryLife.com today, order your diapers and wipes subscription, or gift a friend who might need diapers and wipes for their little one, and use the code LILA at checkout for 10% off your order. That's everylife.com and use the code Lila at checkout for 10% off your order. So you wanted to talk about martyrs. Yeah, I was thinking on the way here, I would be great to discuss martyrs, but I wanted to hear about Sing the Hours and just talk to my brother. Let's just use that as a segue. So we're talking about these monks Mm -hmm. who pray down the road. We might be cutting that out, so. But, okay, well, (laughs) monks pray the Lord of the Hours, and they're kind of martyrs. The reason why they wear black or white or whatever, like a a priest wearing black, he's dead. Dead to the world. That's one of the traditional ways of talking. Why, why do priests walk around wearing well, black? Well, this is what I was thinking. So we're talking two days before <clears throat> this event that I'm going to. And I was kind of, oh gosh, I'm going to have to prep this talk. And I'm praying and thinking about it. And the martyrs, you and I have been talking about the martyrs and what it takes to be a martyr, to die for God. Yeah. And for his truth and for his people. And you, you read the stories of the martyrs, Christian martyrs, and they're very grisly, yeah. very intense. And you kind of try to imagine yourself having the courage, quite frankly, to do that. And you're like, oh, you know, how, how, how can I have any shred of that courage? And maybe some people feel confidence in a moment, like, I think I got this in the moment. But who knows how you'll deal with it, with the pressure when it comes. And you said something really interesting because we've been talking about this a lot the last few days. You said something really interesting about how you believe that singing the Psalms prepares one for martyrdom. Oh, yeah. Totally. I mean, that's why Christ relied on the Psalms on the cross. But and he's saying, oh, God, my God, why have like you forsaken me? Like you're training your psyche. saying, into your hands I command my spirit. Yeah, it's a powerful idea. And it's true. I think in order to not be freaked out by martyrdom or even death for that matter, death is something we put out of our minds, but if people really think about it, it is scary. It's universally scary. There's some people who say that they're not scared of death, though. They're wrong. You think they are? If there was suddenly a flash flood and they were in a car, they get scared. They wouldn't be serene. Those same people, I wouldn't be serene. Yeah. There are, I have met some people, though, that I think that it's almost like they don't care what happens to them after they die. It's a kind of almost like a form of despair, in my opinion. It's an ontological you know suicide. Yeah. Ontolo- it's like, and that's, I guess, behind some suicides anyways. But like, there's just like, oh, nothing happens. Kill me now. It's not a big deal. And that's, I mean, that sounds pretty hellish. Yeah. So there is that. But at the and same time. And I think time, that's a fair amount of moderns today. I wouldn't have ever like felt the visceral horror of like, what would life be like without my child before I had my child, mm. you know? And now that I see my baby every day and I'm frankly kind of addicted to her, like looking at me and me looking at her. Paul like, just had a new baby. Yeah. And our babies are four like four months. Yeah. Month, and I'm like, I'm, I'm low key day by day, just falling yeah. in love with this creature. And, um, so sure? now I think if I lost her for whatever reason, um, it would be the end of all things. And that is, that's, that's an interesting yeah. thing that these people, it's it's easy to forfeit your love for life mm. if you have never relished in true experience of beauty, true experience of goodness. Like mm. if if your life is devoid of purpose, 
if somebody says like, I don't care what happens to me, happens to me when they die, it's probably because they don't care what's happening in their life right now. Well, I think it's because they haven't really experienced love. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. haven't really experienced being loved and, yeah. and having that, and they haven't really loved. And so it's easy for them to peace out because what's holding them here. Yeah. And, as, and then sadly, even peace out in the afterlife. Yeah. Because it's like, what's holding me there? No, there's no one there. It's a black chasm. So there's no love there. There's no love. There's nobody to love in this worldview. And then, you know, unfortunately, like, God doesn't force anyone to go love him in heaven forever. Like if you want to go to hell effectively and not be with God forever, God will respect your choice. Yeah. This is the, it's kind of the desert island phenomenon where people who Tom Hanks is on the desert island and he thinks his life worth living. A lot of people what in terms of uh, cast away. Okay. A lot of people in terms of how their lived experience of daily life, it's so siloed, atomized, granularized apart from, real authentic human relationship and community and when you think about death this is this is the punchline here it's it's partially about singing you're right singing the psalms but also approaching martyrdom it's not that the christian thinks how can i get to a place where i could be martyred it's that the christian in a in christendom in most times of human history thinks instead how can we outdo ourselves next year in celebrating this grisly murder that happened? Far from thinking, how do we make sense of this? Our buddy, Teddy, just got his eyes plucked out. Next year, they're going to take his eyeballs that were plucked out, put them on a plate, and process with them around the town in joyful, jubilant, glorious... And then they're going to take his, a fingernail of his and put it in a Catholic altar 200 miles away to make a church of St. Teddy. Yeah, and I think some people are just like the modern sensibility yeah. is so... I mean, when you even think about the fact that in most of our churches, at least Catholic churches and Orthodox churches, Jesus Christ is there on a crucifix, almost completely naked, in total agony. Brutalized. Completely brutalized. And they even tone it down. But I mean, nails in his hands and his feet... You know, I was just going at church with my little boys and there is Jesus nails in his seat. They're touching the nail. I mean, it's just a grisly image. Like this yeah. is a man who's in the form of complete humiliation and torture. Yeah. And it's in every church in the world. I mean, in one sense, you can understand if someone came out from like an alien from outer space and was like, I'm going to go check out a Catholic church today. And they walk in and they're like, holy, like, who are these people? Why are they putting the poor guy in? What, what kind of yeah. savagery is this that they're worshiping? They're, are they worshiping savagery? You know, and I think even most Catholics are undereducated on like how is an altar consecrated? Did you know that every altar, virtually in existence, has first class relics in it? They build into the marble or wood or whatever. First rock relics of a saint and yeah. sometimes a martyr. Every yeah. single church must be built with the bones, with the actual bones, of a guy who was or a woman who was brutally murdered. It's so, usually martyrs, but it's also other saints. And like in the old church, it was just martyrs. So we used to say, "Hey, dude." Teddy made it. He survived to the end. Let's take little pieces of his body, put it in altars, and we're just going to be celebrating his victory till the day we die. And like, it's in that context with processions and songs and hymns of praise and uh, like a cohesive, it, it's, it's like far from being afraid of death, that's the sort of Christendom that inspires new martyrs, but in yeah. a good way. What's different from this and maybe like, this is purely about inspiring people to be willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for love. And part of that is... Well, that's why Jesus is on the cross in the church. He's yeah. for love. For it's, love not, of, it's not for self... Right. It's, it, not, it's, not, it's, it's not, not like self-harm or self-flagration. We the, just gave a lot a, of grisly details. Like the yeah. altar things is, is shocking. That's shocking yeah. to a lot of people. But it's not because it's a death cult or you're obsessed with death. It's because precisely through Jesus Christ, life has overcome death. Yes. He has overcome death. And yes. so like our body parts in the altar or whatever, like as you're describing, it's like, we know there's a resurrection of the dead. Yes. We know that there's eternal life. There's an eternal kingdom. We know that he can welcome us into his kingdom because he has purchased us through, he has purchased our salvation. We know all of these things. Yeah. And so there's this incredible joy and relief and almost like laughter at death yes. because of that. And, and the like, martyrs, so many of them, we were talking about this the other day, they're going to their death of all these historical accounts. Many of them went through their, went to their death singing hmm. literally like we're talking about liturgy of the hours sing the hours 
They go to their death, many of them praising God, the name of Jesus on their lips, and singing. When you think about some of these horrific de- ways that some of these people were killed and the fact that some of them went to death singing to like horrific torture, how? Yeah. Cer- certainly it was a grace from God that they had that disposition. How do we have the disposition? Well, you got to be... I. How do we, how do we in our daily yeah. lives develop the faith, the hope, the love to be even prepared one little bit for that kind of adulation of God in a moment of su- extreme yeah. suffering and fear, potential fear. I don't know. So there's a lot of parables and maybe, that address maybe, this. Sorry, maybe before we go to that, we should share an example of this. I'll just share the one that I was reading about recently. It's very, very heavy. Should I share it about St. Yes. Margaret? Okay. I had, oh, a friend of mine, we were texting about this today. And I was asking this friend, I'll just share. I was asking this friend because I'm preparing this speech about martyrs and I'm doing this research and I was asking this friend about mothers because I'm a mother and I, you know, as you know, on the show, I talk about this and trying to figure out how to be a good mother and all this stuff and be the best mother I can be for my kids. And what about mothers who are doing maybe some risky things in their ministry or their evangelization or their apostle or whatever? And what about the kids being at some kind of a risk or whatever, Right. And I think about there's this family called the Ulma fam, Uma family, Ulma family, a Polish family during World War II. They hid Jews on the family farm, this little Polish family with like seven kids, little kids. And they hid Jews and the German police found out and they were snitched on. The German police came and lined them all up and shot them to death. The Ulma family, when they chose to hide Jews, they knew that this could mean death for them and potentially their children, like horrible things, but they still did it because they loved people. And so they're considered martyrs by the Catholic Church. They're considered martyrs. The one I was reading about today, um, I'm going to pull this up. I sent this on a, t- a joint text thread we're on because I was like, holy, holy Manoli, this is so, this is so convicting. Um, her name is St. Margaret of Clitheroe. She was a mother of three people. This is a poem you sent about her by... Um, Gerard Manley Hopkins. Gerard, Gerard Man- Manley Hopkins wrote a poem about St. Margaret of Clitheroe, but I'm not going to read that poem, although it's very beautiful. I want to just read a little bit about the events of her life. Do you remember, do you remember them, Paul? Do I, do I, do you have this memorized? You're so, you're so smart. You're so smart. You want to tell? The one was crushed? She was crushed to death. She was hiding priests. She was hiding priests. From it was the Brits. From the Brits. You know, the, the British people, this was um, in the year, the 16th century, right? Yeah. 16th century. They, there was so much refinement, supposedly, and so many rules of decorum and decor, or decorum and behavior, I should say, but the brutal tortures they subjected their political and religious enemies to are yeah. unheard of. But what she did is she hid, she hid priests, and she was a mother of three. She was like 29 years old, this woman, married to a wealthy butcher in town, you know, passionately in love with Jesus. She hid these priests who were being lined up to be executed. They caught her. Someone snitched on her. They caught her. They told her basically that they were going to get her kids and the, and the, and the servants in her home to testify against her if she didn't. Um, I, I don't remember the exact like judicial proceedings. Do you know? I'm not, I'm not saying this part correctly, but bottom, bottom, bottom line is she did she chose this heinous form of being executed instead of subjecting the people in her house to further scrutiny, which could have included torture. So she did this to protect her children, her servants, and to protect the priests that she had been trying to safeguard for years. And they literally crushed her to death underneath her own physical door. They took the door off of her home and put a sharp rock under her neck, stripped her naked, and crushed her to death. I mean, like, you even think about that. And it's just like, what What did I just hear? It's so mm. dark. It's so heavy. And But as she was being killed, she was saying, Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. And then before she was killed, she says, the sheriffs have said that I'm going to die this coming Friday. And I feel the weakness of my flesh, which is troubled at this news, but my spirit rejoices greatly for the love of God. Pray for me and ask all good people to do likewise. There's something else she said though. Thomas More had his Psalter, his breviary in the Tower of London. Prayed the Psalms till the end. Paul Miki chanted the Te Deum from the Liturgy of the Hours on a 600-mile death march from Kyoto to Nagasaki, where he and like 30 other Japanese Christians were crucified and brutalized. 
And when he was on the cross, he was just trying to preach to convince people that to accept the mercy of God. He just was like full of zeal to the end. But you get there from the work of the historians say that in the 600 mile death march, he chanted the Te Deum the whole time, much to the annoyance of the guards. They joyfully, and the Te Deum is very exultant. Te Deum laudamus. Here we go. She said, God be thanked, I am not worthy of so good a death as this. I die for the love of my Lord Jesus. Yeah. But what does she mean, worthy of so great a death as this? What does that mean? Is she talking about Christ's death on the cross? She's not worthy enough to be crucified? What is she talking about there? What does that mean? That she gets to go, that she believed that being martyred for Jesus, she means she gets to go straight into the arms of Jesus upon Wait, death. Would God be thanked that I am not worthy for that so... I am, that I am, that I am, she says, I am not worthy of this death. She's so, saying, I'm not worthy. But, I'm not worthy of so good a death as this. She's so grateful for the death and even the instrument of torture. That's like what she's saying there. I yeah. mean... Yeah. Um, We've got to wrap this show, so let's... Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so some practicals. Um, okay. If you have a door in your oh house... Gosh, Paul. No, I'm just kidding. So some practicals. Sing the hours. Practicals. Listen to Sing the Hours or download iBreviary or buy a breviary or subscribe to the... Is it bad for me to start pimp... You can go. Um, you do it. Projecting. Okay. You're fine. Um, but I think back to the, the martyr stuff is... Fidelity in the little things, right? It's like, oh, I want the, the strength to be a martyr one day. Well, do you have the strength to be kind to your family and to do the dishes? Read your Bible, like like do the little things. Like yeah. and Jesus himself says, be faithful in the little things. And that's where we practice. That's like our little mini boot camps every day to be prepared for that moment when the Lord may give us the opportunity to do even more for him. As a final note. I used to be very afraid of eternity. My teenage years, I remember having a few, like, just a couple days even of terror. Mm. Like, how could I even live forever? Wouldn't I just be, like, mm. on a runaway train towards exhaustion and you can never mm. escape? Even if I was seeing God, even if I'm in heaven, wouldn't I get, like, tedious? How could you live forever? The, the thing that I realized is, just like I used to be afraid of bench pressing. I never thought, wow, I could bench two, two plates like right away. But after 140 days straight of going to the gym in my early 20s, I got to two plates. Like you mm -hmm. can get, and in heaven, Revelation describes how we will sing the praises of God forever. In the last few years, especially with singing so much, I've gotten to a very strange point where... And I've talked to a lot of people who sing the hours where they have a similar experience. In the in, At the monastery today, I wished it was longer. Mm. It was daytime prayer. It was about eight minutes. And I thought, man, if only, like, Lord, don't let me go down the mountain. I, I just want to, don't you remember Peter said, Lord, why don't we stay here forever? When Christ showed mm. his heavenly glory, he's like, let's just, let's just build some tents. Let's stay here forever. Let's not go down. And you get to the point where, it is so clearly an experience of heaven. And when you do it, you get that grace on earth to do it in the song of the Liturgy of the Hours. It actually has created a great desire for heaven. And I think that that is another aspect in which it does prepare you for martyrdom. Because all I want to do is sing to my Lord mm. in the, with the veil torn back. It's all I want to do. And that's, that's real talk. And the more I do it, the more I want it. Mm. And I never would have imagined, I'm telling you, I started off being terrified of the idea. When I read Revelation, I was like, what are we just going to do, like sing? And just like, it's going to be exhausting. But no. One it's last the, question it's a real on deal. this. It's so beautiful, Paul. How is martyrdom different than, and the desire for it because you want to go sing forever to our Lord in heaven, different <clears> from, hey, I kind of hope I die today and get in a car crash or something? Oh, uh, because martyrdom is a participation in Christ's act of love. It's a participation in configuring yourself to Christ in a 
more perfect way. And so it's a special calling. It's a unique calling. And it would be very, very, I hope that, I mean, I can't say God willing that I hope that I will be martyred, but if I were approaching that, and if you were, then hopefully God would give you the grace and you'd have enough nature that that was built on to uh, sustain it. But I mean, the point is that like, it is a very, very unique and beautiful sign of Christ. And when you become another Christ, then there's a great dignity in that. And it's a great, great privilege. And, and the thing that gives me hope is that Jesus is with you in it. Like St. Stephen, the first martyr, it was like he looked to heaven and then he, it's like he fell asleep and they're stoning him to death. Yes. This young Christian man who just was full of love for Jesus. And the martyrs... But he died so... Pe- he like died almost like he fell asleep, the scripture says. Now again, not all martyrdoms are like that one. The martyrs of <laughs> Compiègne a- were that for each other when these nuns... Look up the martyrs of Compiègne. The French Revolution. When these they nuns were, were be assisting being- each other and praying vespers and finishing the chant as their heads hit the pavement... Mm. They, I guarantee you, since those nuns, those Carmelites in their rule would have prayed all 150 psalms every week with many repeats Mm -hmm. per day. So they're praying like 300 psalms a week. Wow. And when you do that with your sisters, and the reason why they chose that vocation is because they believe this is leaving the world. We're participating Mm -hmm. in heaven now. We're still on earth in our exile, but we're just going to do the heaven stuff. We're going to sing to God. And so in doing that, as their heads hit the floor and they were being guillotined one by one, they were the heavens opening up for Mm. each other because for them, just as I've just started to understand Mm. for them participate, participating in the sacred chant of the Psalms passed down, that is heaven. Mm. That's what heaven shall be. So they were living heaven in, in a way, even as they walked to enter heaven through this grisly death of being guillotined. I believe, as we said at the beginning of the conversation, I believe that all liturgy is a ripping, a partial tear of the veil between heaven and earth. Mm-hmm. They're, 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 the new Jerusalem meets the old Jerusalem in liturgy. In every tabernacle, that's the new Jerusalem. In every Catholic mass, every Orthodox divine liturgy, heaven and earth are, 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 have, have met and kissed. And what's really interesting about that idea is that it, when you have these stories like the martyrs of Compiègne and they're doing liturgy as they die, you're getting a crazy singularity, a crazy convergence of that reality because they truly are stepping up to the parapet and just already doing the heaven and earth thing and then immediately entering heaven as martyrs. And so it's just like, why aren't there, why aren't there movies made about that? That's the most incredible dramatic moment in the last 200 years, in my opinion, is like something like the martyrs of Gumbian or Maximilian Colby who just chanted in his cell they're until making, he... There's some folks making a movie on that right now. Is he going to be singing? I hope I those know. filmmakers have some reference point, because like we said, like... He sang as he died. Yeah, it's true. He did. He just was like... <laughs> yeah. and, and they didn't even... They only knew, if memory serves, that he had died because the singing stopped. Yeah. And they came in there, and he was just sort of peacefully lying there. But like, his last... And you know what? The singing did not stop. Mm. He just got his strength back in his temporary, you know, like, I mean, he, he was received into Jesus's arms and he just kept, kept singing. So his death was also like another convergence of this reality where heaven and earth meet and then you step off, you know? So martyrdom might not be very, my hope is if, if I imagine like my death, my hope is that it will be surrounded by enough sung prayer that I also don't, notice the passing of the of the shadow that would be very special and i would wish that on anybody let's start a ministry where we pray to people where we sing it sing to people the scripture while they die be crazy or sing outside <laughs> of an abortion clinic why don't we sing yeah, uh, i've done that an office for the there's, dead there's people that do that yeah that's yeah. very powerful i don't know if what i mean you can have someone else on the show who's had experience of that mm. but yeah, we've sung psalms outside of abortion clinics, but I've never done an office of the hours Let's do it. outside of an abortion clinic. Bring Jesus right there, heaven and earth. Bring heaven, earth, and hell right together. What? You'd get Dante's Paradiso if you sang the, uh, the liturgy outside an abortion clinic. Anyway, we got to wrap. <laughs> um, Paul, where can people find your work? Singthehours.org or YouTube. 
Let's sing the hours, Spotify. We're filming this. We like. We're filming this, by the way, at like 10 p.m. I have a flight tomorrow morning at like 7 a.m. And we both have probably screaming children back at the house. So we will wrap, but thank you for listening. You're the best, sissy. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Lila Rose podcast. If you like listening to the show, please don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and podcast app. Otherwise, you might not get future episodes and we can't get the show to you. Also, don't forget to rate the show. Give us five stars. Leave us a review. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Give it all to me. I want to hear it because that helps the show reach more people and helps us improve the show. And lastly, don't forget about our locals community. We have over a thousand members, which we're so excited about, and we want you to join. You can do that at the link in the bio at locals.com. If you become a paid subscriber, you help make this show grow and reach more people, and you get some very cool stuff. Go check it out today at locals.com and the link in the bio. Thanks so much, and we'll see you guys next time. And a huge thank you to our partner, EWTN. EWTN is the largest religious broadcast network in the world, reaching millions of people with the faith, with news and entertainment. Check them out at EWTN.com.